So I put out on my socials that I'll be chatting with you today and for them to leave any questions that you could answer uh, during this chat today. So if it's all right with you, um, I'd like to ask some questions on their behalf. Hopefully good ones. Okay, <laughs> yeah. let's do it. Um, they're the <laughs> largely divided into personal interests and a lot of people want some guitar advice from you. So I'm really happy to see that. Okay, that's so good. We'll, we'll start with a, an, easy an, an easy question, I should say here. So um, someone asks, standards are well known for their fruits. How did you come up with the fruit aesthetic? Yeah, that's, I, I get that question all the time. And yeah, it's like, I, think, yeah. I start to think about it myself as well. Um, I think the thing was we, I would never been in a band that was instrumental only. Um, I'd always been in like indie bands or punk bands. So it was always with vocals. So it felt like, okay, we're going to do something that has to do with the, the lyrics or it like matches the vibe, you know, and there was like more of a scene for that, I guess. So with the music we were making, I didn't feel like it was like super obvious what to do, you know? But it was like, okay, well, if I listen to the music, it just sounds like fun and happy. And it's just, just like, that's kind of the fruity fruit vibe. It's just like, it's fun. It's like a good time. Like when you eat fruit, it's not like, you know, a seven layer casserole or something. It's like right, fruit. Right, you just right. eat it. And it's like, it's, it's no, it's a no brainer, man. So it's like, it was just super easy to connect those two things together. And I think it's just something that also just stuck like, if we did it and then it was like whatever we probably would have moved on to something else but then like people really started to dig it so i was like oh, okay this is something that we can like lean into a bit more i guess yeah, you know there's what a mean? whole community around it now right <laughs> yeah and it's cool i like i like it i like seeing like the tattoos and like people are giving us fruit at uh, the shows yeah, I, like that's what i want to see you know that's that's cool <laughs> so people people get an actual tattoos of your your album you know, the the uh the the artwork from your albums and uh, actually bring a fruit to to shows as well. Is, is, do, do people bring any inflatables or anything like that? Fruit inflatables? Or? Never, not not super big on the inflatables lately. Um, yeah. It's like usually it's like fruit or it's like a fruit costume, which I really dig. <laughs> I'm a huge costume, fan of awesome. the fruit costume. Yeah, it just feels like a like a festival. Like it feels like fun. And then but yeah, that, that you know definitely got that community vibe to it. It's, it's wonderful to to hear and to see that. Yeah. Um, was I was gonna say um, on on that on that topic, what what would you say is your favorite fruit? It always changes, man. I mean, yeah. the one that I eat the mo most yeah. is is avocado because I'm from California, so we're always eating avocados every day. Right. And uh, I have a Costco membership now, which if you don't know, <laughs> it's like huge retail store. Right. So yeah. you can get like a bunch of avocados for cheap. So I'm just eating them like every day on toast or. Like I, you can just make up a meal. You can just be like, "Yeah, it's we're, we have rice, we have, you know, some protein. We'll just throw some avocado." Now it's, now it's a meal. Or like I think last week I just like made pasta, and then I just threw an avocado in it and just mushed it around, and then that was a meal. <laughs> so it was like, you know what I mean? Good. It's like that's. But I feel when I think of fruit, I don't always think of avocado. I think of like a sweeter sort of thing. So maybe right. if I had to say like what I've been super digging is like blueberries blueberries and like they're supposed to be really really good for you so i've been trying to eat those more same thing just go to costco bulk up on blueberries nice. throw them in something nice. eat them yeah okay the, the, that person who asked that comment um they said they can't stop buying your merchandise every time they come to shows because of that free aesthetic. good so i thought that was something good. that you might want to know <laughs> thank god <laughs> so your, merch, your merch game is strong apparently <laughs> so, hell yeah <laughs> yeah all right. So, um, well, uh, over the time that I've got to know you, I know that you're into, um, you know, many different styles of music, uh, but most people are going to associate with you, with you, with um, more like math rock and such. So keeping that in mind, what would you say currently is your favorite math rock style band? And why would that be? Oh, it's such a hard question, I know. I don't especially like because question we're friends myself. with all of them. So you know what I mean? <laughs> no, no, it's, so a good, it's a good one. Currently, because... No, yeah, that's fair. It's it's like, <laughs> they're all my favorites, you know what I mean? Because it's like yeah. a genre where it's hard to hate, like a band, where it's like, yeah, I don't know, like, every band is just so, so unique and interesting, and uh, I think that's what is really amazing about that style. Of course, you get like bands that are like just cop. It's like you know copycat stuff. But even then, I still enjoy it. It's just not as enjoyable because it's like, oh right. yeah, I can tell mm -hmm. who you want to 
you know, <laughs> beat really, nice. you know, yeah. but that's that's every genre. Um, <laughs> I'd say the one band that I've been like every time I put them on, it's just like a different sort of vibe if I'm with somebody or just like it really changes up my listening time is like this band Clout Chaser. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. Yeah. Yeah. Clout Chaser. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, dude, this band is like, yeah. So um, I had actually known them for a bit, but they did other stuff. And then the band, I think, was formed like over COVID or something. Um, and so the first release was really good. I really dug it. And then the second release was just like unreal. Like it was just like some of the things that they're doing, it's like more technical than like t- technical death metal. But then it has this like meme flair to it. Okay. It's just so unique. It's like hella, but meets the like the internet or something and uh i can tell you like we saw them twice because we had them on two shows on our tour last year and they are probably better live than they are in like they can play better than on the record which is saying a lot because the record like is very tight nice but it was like it was unreal like just the reactions from people because i don't think they really understood was what was about to happen but it's like (laughs) cameron is like sweet picking on the guitar and then brady the drummer is just like doing like full on octopus motion. It's just unreal. And it's just like a talent that when you see it, you know, it's like, okay, this is really something different. So I hope that they get more tours and they get more stuff happening and just keep releasing music. Cause it's, that's what's what I like about math rock is like uniqueness, individuality. I think that's right. Like the right. most important thing. Well, I'm, I'm glad I got an answer out of you because yeah, those kind of questions are always tricky. <laughs> Whenever someone asks me what yeah. your favorite band is, you suddenly forget that music exists. You're like, oh, I, I, <laughs> you you said well, if you said favorite band, that's impossible. But if yeah, you say math yeah. rock band, like currently, yeah, that's probably probably the best yeah. one. I was actually thinking about it last night. Like, how could you answer that question? And I I came up with like a couple of criteria. It's like if they were to release a new single or record, would I instantly go and check that out? And another one if they did an audio tree session, would I be really excited about it? I think that's too yeah, good that's, that's, criteria. That's good, that's good criteria. I yeah. think it helps that yeah. they're, they're like newer, you know what I mean? Because there's yeah. a lot of math work bands I like that are, their their releases are a bit older, but I still like them. But right. yeah, it's like, right. it's yeah. fresh, it's new, like it's exciting, you know? Perhaps they're not as active as much anymore. I mean, because I, I, I thought like, um, like Delta Sleep would have been one of those bands for me. And then I felt like if TTNG suddenly like announced that they're releasing something i would be on that hype train so i guess that's probably one band yeah really enjoy G- give it a couple but, years give yeah, it a couple years yeah. i think they'll they'll be back they'll so be back they for sure back. yeah um oh, so- I, we don't have to hope i know it's a matter of time okay matter of time on that one i <laughs> had some insight in, insider info yeah that's all i'll say so you, you, you're well known, you're well known for your unique approach to playing guitar and i was interested to know what would you say that your influences are for the style that you developed is there a certain player or number of players or just music or it could be something even outside of um you know guitarists that helped you develop the style that you have this is a question that actually i think is really hard to answer because it's so hard to sometimes pinpoint these things like sometimes you just come up with something and you don't have an explanation for it it just kind of happens you know what i mean so Mm -hmm. Um, all I can say is that when I started to play guitar, like really play guitar, you know, the first guitarist that I really dug was like Jimi Hendrix because it's like he had it all. It's like when I first found out about him, it's like it's not like some other players. He really had his own sound, his own like look and everything. And like, I think that was like, you know, in the beginning when I really started to get into it, that was probably the first major, major influence. And it's like for years it was like, dude, I just have to play like Jimi Hendrix. But (laughs) I think that's how you start. You start wanting to do something like somebody and then you start to do it your own way. So, I, I yeah, I got into that. And then um, I started taking lessons from Nick Reinhardt from Terramelos. And oh, nice. that was extremely eye opening because I didn't know anything about like progressive rock or any like I didn't even really listen to Rush, to be honest with you. Like I was very much more interested in like punk or indie music yeah. from that time period, um, which would be like 2014. 2015 so i was totally out of the know and then he put me on to a lot of really cool bands like king crimson like like this town needs guns like yes we just talked yes. about right. yeah. so because he was label mates with them so it was just like a whole new world of stuff so then i ended up catching them um Taramelos at uh 
Chon Super Chon Bros tour like yeah. 2017. Yeah. A few years. And back, it it was funny because I only really cared about Terramelos. Like I went there just wanting to see Terramelos. <laughs> So uh, I remember I was like, OK, I'll just stick around for like Chon or whatever. And then after like two songs, I was like, yeah, there's no vocals. I don't get it. And I just left like it was, it was so it was so funny. And then um, when I started making my own riffs kind of like in that style and I started making the band like standards, then right, they would yes. play. They played again with TT and G. So I was like, OK, cool. Now I have to go. And I stuck around for the whole show and I was like, OK, wow, I was being kind of a baby before. Yeah, like, it's actually really cool. <laughs> Um, uh, so yeah, it was like kind of like really dipping my toes in there. But I think the thing is I've never tried to go full into that. Cause I think all of those bands that we've talked about just recently, like in the last minute, like they're all so unique and I think it's hard not to, it's hard to appreciate it, but not copy it like Chon or this town needs guns or yeah, like Polyphia. It's, yeah. it's so easy, I think to copy and so I would like learn a song or two from like those bands and then I'd be like, okay, now I'm going to go check out something completely different or not even something on the guitar. And it's hard to pinpoint those things, but I would say like, yeah, a lot of this town needs guns. Like I learned a lot of those riffs um, and I just, yeah, I learned like a little bit of everything. I, I just tried to learn a little bit of a bit of everything. You know what I mean? Um, yep. I think the other thing that's cool is for guitar players, there's now a really big scene for like, finger style i guess you call it like it's like yeah, guitarists yeah, yeah. that are on the candy rat label um those guitarists are really forward thinking because they're kind of solo guitarists so they do things that like a lot of people i think don't realize are actually super forward thinking like a lot of interesting like self-accompaniment percussive patterns on the neck and stuff like a lot of guitarists especially electric guitarists don't really like think about these things because you play with a drummer or you play with a pick or something. And like, that's one genre where I didn't learn a lot of that material, but I've learned a lot like watching it. So like John Gom is like one of those guys. Like, I feel like him and I are like so similar, but then people don't see it because our music doesn't sound at all the same. Right. But the way that yeah. we play is like actually quite similar, if you <laughs> like really look at it. And also like you may or may not know him just depending on if you're in that circle or not. So I think there's just so many things and I mean, dude, just like I, I mean, I just went to Nam, so I feel like my brain is still recovering from that. But like right. there's so many guitar players. So many, like yeah, yeah. there's you ever have that thought where you're just like, dude, there's so many guitar players <laughs> really, in the world. Like there's like it's cr it's crazy. It's actually like legitimately crazy. Um yeah. I think I had a teacher once who told me that it's like upwards of a billion I think almost a billion people on this planet can play the guitar to some degree like they can right. figure out a chord they've, shape or two they've had that's, a go at that's it. Yeah. nuts yeah yeah that's yeah. nuts like even more so than piano players so I don't know it's just like I, I feel like it's so hard to really just be your own thing and like say like oh my influence like yeah it's it's these three dudes like yeah I think it's yeah. with guitar there's so many things like that so really adding to that i think it's really hard not to compare yourself to others as well now in this age because yeah well like you said just going to nam that's a bombardment of like crazy good players right um but, oh dude it's like yeah. i i literally am walking through the the showroom right and then on the right is <laughs> uh fucking like forgot who i think it was john petrucci was doing like a thing right, and then to yeah. the left was mateo mancuso like literally in the same like like right next to each other both of them <laughs> shredding huge huge crowds and i was just like this is like great this is just absolute insanity right, um right. but i think at the end of the day that's that's the thing that i've noticed that has done the the worst for my playing and for my my guitar playing is like if when I start comparing myself then yes. I'm like oh Sorry, like dangerous. this person's doing really well yeah like yeah. what if I try to do something like that but it's like that's not really me you know what right. I mean okay. like yeah so I think it, it just lead depends you to, yeah stop stop taking action and you know giving up and just demotivating as well so it's it, you do have to be careful um a few things to unpack there one I didn't know <laughs> Rick Rick um nick sorry nick reinhardt gave guitar lessons that's wonderful to hear and that was a, that's a whole we need a whole different video for that that's, okay yeah I'd that really was a time in know itself more about that i didn't know yeah that. um going back to the Jimi hendrix thing i guess you could say you could have some kind of influence of like 
um, harmony and melody playing at the same time. Something that you do. Yeah, like Little yeah. Wing, dude. It's like, I think people yeah. look at Little Wing and they think like, oh, that's a beautiful ballad from the 60s. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that is like, that is like a, 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 to me, at least when, when I think of guitar and like the way I've studied it and everything, that's that's right up here with like Beethoven for me or, or Bach or Mozart. Right. Because it's exactly. like, when you when you look at how it's actually written and like how everything fits together, like exa it's exactly what you said. It's It's harmony, rhythm, melody all at once. And he's doing it all. And I think people get really, yeah. they start paying attention like, oh, it's like the hippie, like there's like the bells going on at the same time. And it's like, no, dude, right, like right. if you if you look at the music and you look at actually what's going on, it's beautiful. Like I actually taught a student that song once mm -hmm. and he was like, yeah, I really want to learn it, but I'm so lost. And I'm like, it's really easy, actually. It's like E minor. Yeah. G. Yeah. And he's like, well, how did it go from this to this? And I'm like, that's Hendrix, dude. He took yeah, this chord yeah. progression. Anyone else could have just copped out and done the chords but he did this whole thing was the the song um stevie ray vaughan one is it lenny it sounds very influenced by that song i'm not sure if you've heard it yeah lenny. i think um, so i wasn't a big srv except for there's that one song where it's one like track there's a live version of it and he's smoking a cigarette and the whole thing just you know goes down throughout the entire song it's just it's, a, it's, a, it's a great live performance to watch but you can tell that okay. song uh, lenny i guess is dedicated to his wife or a partner or something but um, you can hear the Hendrix Little Wing influence yeah. in song for sure. Uh, there's, yeah, loads, like I said, um, Terra Mella shows. I also went to see Terra Mella when I was still living in England. So that's 2010, 11, something like that. And um, it's a really good show. But the problem was, is didn't bring any earplugs and the whole venue was just like concrete walls. And we actually left <laughs> the last song because our ears were just about to explode. Yeah. <laughs> it's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, and yeah what else was i gonna say um i completely forgot so instead of mumbling about um, <laughs> there's just, there's we'll just so much going on so, here we yeah, just opened I, up all so many different <laughs> topics i love it yeah yeah um so over the time that standards has been a thing there's uh, been a, nun, a, a number a number a number of um drummer changes i just wondered if you saw standards as like a pro your own projects that you were trying to find a drummer for hire or is it you've always had to you've always tried to find a permanent member but ultimately it just didn't work out with some of the drummers that you've had in the past yeah totally i i uh, i've wanted to talk about this at length uh, so now thank you for giving me the platform to do that. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, when I started standards, I started it with a classmate at Cal arts yeah. and, um, we were, we played together for about a year. And in that time we came up with the first EP. So that was enough to give us some boost into like a bit of touring, a bit of, um, we like opened up locally for some really cool bands. And uh, then after that, I had a different drummer come in. But what I kind of it kind of changed the project parameters a bit because it started out as a 50 50 collaboration. Right. But then with the with me and the other drummer not working out, like basically it was, you know, because I, I was writing all the riffs and then the drummer was coming up with all the drum parts. But it, it kind of shifted into like, well, I'm presenting fully formed demos. You know, like I would write out all the drum parts or at least, you know, a treatment, you know, so it would have like all of the, you know, where the snare should go and all the stuff. Right. And I was writing all the guitar. And then when I started on the first record, adding more like synths and stuff, I was doing all that. So it was something where it was kind of like I would like to find a full time replacement. But uh, the nature of the project was just picking up very quickly at the time. And so there were a lot of offers coming in very quickly which I was very, very excited about and like grateful about. But it was like, OK, we have this tour and then we have one month off and then we have, you know, we can go play like Arc Tangent, which was like, dude, like you want to go do that. Like that is super yeah, cool. Of course. Yes. Um, yeah. So it's like, OK, we do that. So um, for the second EP, I had Forrest Rice from Covet do yes. the drums. Yeah. And um, he actually ended up doing drums for a lot of the standards of records, the records but right yeah. yeah yeah of course but when it when it was like that he was just kind of like hey like i can do this these drums you know as a studio drummer but i can't do i can't be like the drummer of yeah, the band yeah well, so it put me in a predicament so. yeah it, it put me in a bit of a predicament because it was like well i would like him to to drum on the yeah. records yeah. but also i don't want to 
not tour. I would like to tour the songs and I would like to also recoup money that I put down to record these songs, right? Right. Yeah. So the only way you can really do that is touring. So I had, yeah, like three drummers do live performances from 2019 to 2022. And I think if I'm being quite honest, like there were spaces for those drummers. Uh, I'm not going to go through all of them. It's like a whole thing. Yeah. But there were spaces for them all to live, like basically become the full time drummer. So do the studio work and the live work. Oh, okay. Um, which was okay with Forrest as well. Like he was not trying to like say like, hey, I, I, you know, he was just like, I will do the studio drums when you ask me to do them. Right. So in between, you know, for one dr live drummer, it would be like, oh, I, I can't fully commit to this touring schedule or it doesn't work with my lifestyle or something. And then, which is understandable, because like course, I said, yes. I, I didn't I didn't want to say no to these things. Like, it's like, you know, you think like, oh, OK, like maybe I'll just sort this issue out and get a like a full time drummer. But then it's like, oh, we got this email. We got this tour offer. It's like can't really say no to that. So it was a it was a couple of years and then COVID happened. So it was like really complicated as well, because right. it was like. Right. Yeah. It was, so it's just been it was basically all stemming from that first split where I never fully found like a full time replacement that could do both until recently, until about two years ago. Right. I've yeah, been playing right. with Moises Popa, who is a friend of a friend. So I actually met him a couple of times. But nice. funny enough, he actually the first time I met him, he had a gig playing for uh, it was actually an American uh, an American Idol like guitarist <laughs> okay. named right. Alejandro. Yeah. He's actually yeah. really cool. His name is uh, music is. He goes on the name Scary Pool Party, I think. Okay. I don't know if he still does, but he got, like, pretty far on American Idol, and he had a lot of buzz from that. And it was actually cool because he does, like, math rock guitar shit, but then he's singing, like, American okay. Idol style, like, over it, um, <laughs> as well as, like, other things. But that was his gig at the time, and I was like, dude, this guy is this guy rips. Like, I wonder how he'd sound on the material. Mm. But I was like, he's probably wants like a thousand dollars a gig or something which is like no math rock band is going to do that right so um yeah it's, it was just basically like hey you know we're getting you know every every month it was something it was like we got a tour offer we got a label offer we got a festival offer right you know right. you got the offer to do this or that so it's like we need it we need to play we need to show up and do it so i would just kind of pick and choose anyone that i could um until like like i said about two years ago now yeah. boys this is the drummer he's doing studio and yeah um why so he's, he's on the new record then the drums yes he's on yes, the new record yeah. he's so on all the, the first, new singles that are out now yeah that'd be the first record without forests drumming on it yes is that correct? yes exactly yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah yeah because again i always wanted to move towards that but it was just something where it was like it didn't it didn't ever fully work for anybody's schedule right or right, anybody's yeah, involvement yeah. so it was like you know what what can i really do so i i do see those comments from time to time it does irk me a bit because it's like if yeah. you were in the, my situation, you would mm -hmm. feel very frustrated as well. But it's understandable because, you know, I can't fit that novel's length of an answer into, like, everything. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, I enjoy it. Me. But, of course, like, behind the scenes, I am doing, like, a lot of work. Like, yes, I do yes. a lot of the writing. I do all of the imagery, like, all the financials. Like, mm -hmm. I do quite a bit of it. So it didn't also make no sense to do it. But... It's not like, hey, it's the Marcos Mena band. It is like a collaboration at the end okay. with other parties. Yeah. So that's kind of the deal, basically. I hope that clears everything up. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it certainly does, I'd say. Um, yeah, I, I just think, I'm just trying to put myself like perspective, thinking about drummers having to drum someone else's drum parts as well. I'm thinking if that had anything to do with it in like, Forest right the past. Yeah, that was a mess. Play those parts live, or that's a know, mess, man. Those, those it's it's me it's it was a mess, and like I don't know, it's it's hard too because maybe one drummer wants to do something one way, and yeah, and two drummers drummers play in like zillions of projects too. So it's like because okay, drummers are yeah. always looking for a different. So it's like, <laughs> hey man, like uh, uh, we got we gotta we gotta. You, we gotta buckle down and do this. You know what I mean? I mean like we gotta. <laughs> it is, yeah, it's part. It's part of bands, right? Like sometimes you do have someone for a while, and then things change. You know, maybe you're not happy. You don't want to do that style anymore. Maybe you want to get a different drum. I mean, that's what happened with Mountains. Um, we, our original drummer, we wanted to change, and that was a hard conversation. Not gonna lie. Um, and then 
I, I had children, couldn't really play shows anymore. COVID happened. So we, we haven't played since 2019, but hopefully play again soon. But, um, and the fact is that our drummer lives in uh, Mexico now and oh. <laughs> South and Ali, uh, bass player in, in South Korea. So I always wonder, is it worth, yeah, I, I could ask our drummer, um, Joel, if he wanted to record more stuff with us, but maybe if we were to play, it might make more sense to find somebody local, you know, so I could have the same That's situation the thing. It's, yourself. You see. But it, but then I think it takes, yeah. it's it's like that conversation, or that would be more understandable, but for yeah. me, it's like, it's a two-piece, so right. it's it raises a lot of questions if it's the other person is changing. Yeah, but then with other bands, fair, it's yeah. like, if somebody else is yeah. being swapped out, <laughs> like some bands have revolving a revolving yeah, door of drummers yeah. and bassists, but it's like nobody questions it because like the singer is still there yeah. or something. You know what I mean? Right, right. Yeah, yeah. That makes more sense. And then, yeah, people, you know, they speculate and ask a lot of questions uh, behind the scenes. Right. That that definitely happens. But yeah, it's totally understandable. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's totally understandable. It's just like uh, unfortunate circumstances and timing, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> okay, so um, moving on. So let's look at some advice for guitarists. So you're quite well known for using the, you know, the thumb slap technique as well as your finger picking. And um, what's that theory, Ros Roschiato? Um, Roschiato, yeah. Yeah, the technique as well. So I thought this was a great question here. It's like, how do you set your guitar up for that? And they wanted to know what string gauges you, you are using and what's the typical action, string action that you'll use. And is there anything, any quirky things that you do to set up your guitars? Yeah, setup is so crazy because I feel like sometimes I play guitar and then I pick up someone else's guitar and I'm like, I don't play, I don't play this. This is not yeah. my instrument. Yeah. So yeah, setup is really crazy. I think the hard part is tapping requires like the low action, but then percussive techniques like you're mentioning, like thumping, rascado, like slapping, like all this stuff. I feel like it needs to be a bit higher. A bit higher. So yeah, I yeah. found like I, I guess I would say I set it up a little bit lower than normal. Yeah. But yeah. it's not so low that like Stanley Jordan would like it because like Stanley right. Jordan is like he literally has it like right off the, the yeah, fretboard. Yeah, two hands but that's, tapping everything. Yeah. yeah, so I mean I can I can like basically do this with like little to no resistance but then if like here it's not like it's still getting like a bounce you know there's still something here so I think well, well, it would be like a little less than normal basically. Yeah. If you, if you, do, you, do you measure it at all like you you 1.5 to <laughs> <Don't>, <laughs> I have to be honest with you now it's like <laughs> there's so many things that I'm shielded from doing because I've been afforded like a lot of luxurious like endorsement yeah treatment yeah. so this guitar was set up for me I don't I don't even have a tech like if I had to call someone I wouldn't know who to call <laughs> I just had it sent like from the factory like this yeah. so I don't know okay, what is so done to I, it can you tell us what string gauges they are yeah, I just use the normal ones, like 10 to 46. Okay. So mm. for some tunings, like this this guitar, actually, I, ju I just picked it up off the rack because it's I just restrung it. The other one is not as this. It sounds like rubber bands, yeah. so I'm not gonna not gonna do that one. But okay. I do I actually do like this more. I'm not afraid to say it. The AZS uh, AZS shape. Yeah, that the one's AZ my favorite shape. actually. AZS. This one is also very good. It's yeah. just uh, that one is like spe I'll talk about it later. Okay. But yeah. um. This one, I think, actually has power slinkies, which are 48 to 11, because I do a drop tuning. So right. this one is like C sharp, G sharp, D sharp. It, it's like D A E, A C sharp E, but half a step down. Half step down. Yeah, yeah half step yeah, down. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. this is like for our, our newer stuff. We're doing some stuff in this tuning, and nice. it's like it's a killer tuning. <laughs> yeah, tuning. yeah. But then I, so I had tried power slinkies like from a time, and then I was like, oh, like my hands hurt. I can't do it. And then. Once we started doing this tuning, I was like, yeah. I was getting away with it with the regular slinkies, but then I was like, dude, I feel like it would be so much better with the power slinkies. So I got those, and then that has like completely, it's like, yeah, this is the perfect, but only for this tuning. Like, it's not right. gonna work in any other tuning. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's like I bounce back back and forth between those, um, yeah. and like yeah. I don't try new strings unless I feel like I need to. I try to just keep it very simple. So you just you're just using like a, a standard set. So even though you are changing to different tunings, you're not doing you know individual string changes because like recently I I had this guitar behind me in D A E A C sharp E tuning and I actually thought about the individual string tension as well. So I bought multiple packs. And yeah. Like, so if I was tuning up, then I'd go down to you know different gauge. 
And um, it felt all right like that. But I um, I know that uh, Tim Collis of uh, TTNG that he in he does that for all of his guitars. He will use individual string gauges for, for whatever tunings he's using them. And then um, that must get expensive for one. Um, but um, from my experience of it, it didn't really make that much of a difference. So even though you are half a step down there, you are tuning strings up still, and the lower string is going down to, what's that C? It's going to be, was it um, D sharp, right? If you're tuning down. Yeah, C yeah, sharp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, which is like um, a little too low, I think. Yeah, it's yeah. a little so too I'd, low for a standard E. I've I've recommended to people if it's just for a short amount of time, then maybe just use your regular gauge of strings. But if you're going to keep it in that tuning indefinitely or for a long time, then you might want to look at using individual string gauges. But um, I've never really had a problem either way. So it seems, from what you said, it seems similar for you as well. Just regular strings, just put them in that tuning. I mean, now that you've said it, like if if I could manifest like a new gauge, I probably would. Like, I I wouldn't be opposed to using like something a little thicker than a forty six, like it'd be yeah. like forty seven or something. I don't yeah. know. Um, the thing is, like, it's never been so much of an issue that I'm like, dude, like this is driving me nuts. Like, I can't play a show, I can't sleep, right? Right. Because I'm thinking <laughs> yeah. constantly about this problem. It's just like that's the thing. It's like I think. Yeah. If we do more gear questions, it's going to extend to all the questions. It's just literally like, <laughs> dude, like, I just don't think about that stuff. I'm just playing. And then, like, if I yeah. hear something or if something bugs me, I'm going to fix it. But I just try to just focus on the performance. Right, I right. think I'm, I'm maybe that's a disappointing that, yeah. answer to some people. But it's yeah. like at the end of the day, dude, it's like if I took like a guitar off the rack from Guitar Center and I just like plugged it into a line six and I played a show and no one knew Right. That I was playing out of like a 30 watt like practice amp. I don't think many people would care. Yeah, maybe that's right, right. not true, but I really do believe that. Like, yeah, I yeah. think it's more so about the performance and like how you play at the end of the day. So, yeah. So, to add some anecdotal evidence to your story there about picking up a different guitar and it just feels incredibly different and it feels like you can't even play it. Like, um, years back when I was playing a show, I broke a string and I didn't have any spare ones with me. And then I borrowed another band's guitar and it was like a Strat. And the action must have been, I don't know, it was like really hard to push down the strings compared to what I was just playing. And I tried to play the rest of the show with that guitar and those strings were rusty. They were old. <laughs> it's like, this is, this is not, not having a good time here. So it's weird Very how tough. a guitar can feel completely different just with different action and slightly different strings. Oh, different yeah. Setup, yeah. So No, I can't. I can't yeah. do high action. I can't do rusty. Dude, it's some people with the strings, it's like, I feel like it's like <laughs> you go over to your friend's house and it's like, yeah, dude, you can crash on the couch. And then the couch has like bugs in it and it's like some <laughs> yeah. old blankets on there and like someone spilled popcorn everywhere like to them that's fine but to yeah. me it's like yeah. dude i i don't want to sleep on that couch like i feel like it's like not hard to replace your strings when they're getting old and rusty yeah and it's also not hard to just like make your guitar yeah. i don't i never that's the thing with action i never understood why people want it so so high like i know mm. we were talking about stevie ray vaughn earlier like he had his shit like cranked and like yeah, it was like uh, thick yeah, strings. Yeah, guitarists like that. Yeah. I get it, just, it, but I yeah. think it's like as a majority, can we just not accept that like unless you have like gorilla grip and you're like just bending the shit out of some strings or something like yeah, it so, should so, it should be clear <laughs> to not use that, right? Yeah. So if we were to summarize that, just play what feels most comfortable to you. <laughs> so what we can say there. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. for tapping, yeah. you want it to be low. For percussive yeah. techniques, you don't want the, the strings to be too thin. But yeah. I think that is something that you have to... I think I think the best thing to do is just start with the average. And then you can start to up and go up and down from there. If you're just like, hey, like this, uh, of is, course. this yeah. string is flubby or something. Like you, you just, you'd figure it out. I guess I'm privileged in saying that because I, Ernie Ball, they just give me... Like, I'm just like, hey, I want this thing. They're like, cool. Okay. Like, I, I, I whereas, want, like, I know, I like, like, like I guitar so strings, strings got expensive, dude. <laughs> I went to Guitar Center and guitar strings got, like, really expensive. Yes. I was like, whoa. Yep. yep. <laughs> Sucks, and man. The, um, I was going to say again. Yeah. And uh, one thing is, like, I always have, like, a, you know, the cleaning cloth and I'll just run up and, like, grab the string and I'll pinch it and go up and down it after every time I play because that just makes your strings last so much longer. Um, oh, dude, that's, like, that's a game changer yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. So I just got these these cloths with all, like, 
you know, rusty marks on them where I've gone up and yeah. down, up and down the strings on. Um, yeah, especially if you have multiple guitars, you're fine. If you leave one without cleaning it and then you go back to it a while later, it's like, well, oh, those it's strings post, need changes. Man. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, this is this is wonderful. So um, what? This is a good question. What What is your approach to practicing guitar? So do you have like a, a regimented routine that you follow or is it just more free, follow, uh, free flowing, I should say, or is it just like seasons of practicing guitar? What, how, how, and maybe has that changed over time as well? Because all of us are going on different guitar journeys here from when we start to where we're at currently. Yeah, no, that's uh, the practice question, which we didn't just edit in. <laughs> is that's a great question um guitar practice is such a weird thing because i think everyone has a different definition for what it means to practice right so i've definitely gone through even different phases in my life of what it what practicing means to me so i mean the first like five or six years i think that i played guitar i didn't really practice like i just would like play and even sometimes it was like practicing was just me like doing it over and over again until I got it, but I wasn't actually doing any practice tools. Like I wasn't using a metronome or I wasn't, you know, it was just really weird how I did it. And so when I became 17, I got a lot more serious about the guitar. Like I started learning like, I guess, guitar, guitar songs that everyone learns, you know what I mean? Right, right. right. And from like 17 to 19, I was like really, really invested in, in learning stuff. But it was like, it was, it was like just super boot camp heavy i guess you could say so it was like sit with the metronome and and then i would learn the song and then it was like i was always doing something so it was like i and i think i didn't really have a good goal so i was just trying to learn anything that i could so it was like oh okay i, I found i heard about you know you were talking about steve ray vaughn like i learned about the there's like the one song where he does this really fast like blues like it's like yeah yeah Yep, yep. It's like something like that. And then it's like uh, just like a blues. Like, dude, I'm just going to learn this. So I'd spend all day just learning that song. Then I would learn it and be like, okay, next. So I would do that like every day with a, like I would learn like a Fall of Troy song. Mm. Then I would learn like, uh, you know, a Hendrix song. So I would just literally would just find any like Cliffs of Dover. I learned like the first right. half of it. And then I was just like, I was just trying to learn anything that I could. Um, and then there was a big phase where I just worked on basics. So yeah. I was just working on time. Um, I was working on like tech, different techniques. So like thumping, I didn't know how to do that. So I was practicing that. Um, I was really into like Josh Martin. And if you don't know who he is, you check him out. Uh, but he's a really interesting way of playing guitar. So he did like all this like things like glitch tapping. So it was like multiple frets, yeah, you know, or multiple fingers on one fret. And I was like practicing that. Like I would get my oil changed. I'm like, cool, I have 20 minutes. I'm gonna go practice. So I'd practice. And it was like, I was always like a game with myself. I was like trying right, to see how much right. I could practice the, um, so I, yeah, I did lots and lots of practice. The thing about it is like, it's kind of like reading a lot. Like you're like, yeah, let me see how many words I can read. And so at the end of the day, you're reading, like you're a voracious reader. But then I think the problem was a lot of it. I didn't even apply. So I had some latent skills that I learned, but then a lot of the things were completely forgotten. Like, I don't mm -hmm. know a lot of those songs or I don't know a lot of you know, techniques anymore or something like that. So yeah. I think as I've gotten older and probably better at the guitar, I would say what I try to do is be very focused and just focused on one particular sort of way of doing something. So if I find something that I want to get better at now, I go in deep. I don't spend like one day on it and then okay. I go to something yeah. else. Mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm more deep. So now for me, the biggest focus is like time. I think time um and honestly just like articulation like how i actually sound on the guitar right. and one yeah. of the things that's made me realize like i suck at that is uh i play a lot with like neural dsp now so i have <laughs> yeah. like everything i don't even play with an amp for like months okay and then i'll go yeah. on tour and play with an amp but then at home i'm playing through this stuff and it's like it's the 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 just modeling amps in general are really sick but i think the neural ones are different because yeah. Um, or I guess just the plugins are different because you play with a DI yeah. and then, um, you really hear 
when you like fuck something up <laughs> like you really hear it and you're like wow that sounded terrible like so i i don't know i don't know if that makes any sense but when it goes through an amp and it's like really loud it feels psychologically like you didn't make as bad of a mistake as you did but then when you're in the studio you're like lasered in on what you're playing right right yeah and you're going di you're not i'm not i don't go through pedals i just go straight into the amp yeah or into the interface yeah, so yeah. i'm not getting any of that you know juice i'm not getting like any stuff you know so i'm like going straight into the amp basically and it's not like a real amp it's a digital one so i just realized like i there's so many things that i skipped when i was trying to get better at guitar and one of the things i guess was sounding like better with your notes and when you play a note like make it sound beautiful and i think that's one of the things that separates like really advanced players versus like guys that are good but they're not like great you know what i mean and it's like it's even to the point where I think about like when I go on Instagram and watch guitar players, if I'm not watching the video, is it still good? Okay. And yeah. so some yeah. just some, some guitarists, it's like they're yeah. on there, they're playing like, you know, Arctic Monkeys. It's great, but it's like, dude, it doesn't sound that great. It's like okay. they made a cool looking video or they're wearing like a cool outfit and they're like, Yeah, I I, I got to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so it's like, yeah. do you actually sound good on the instrument? I think that's something that I I'm trying to get better at so right i think yeah. i've become more focused on certain things and i think i just have less time now so i'm not you know of course, i used to have yeah. like loads of yeah. time just become an adult so i have like less time i'm trying <laughs> to i'm trying That's to get back into practicing more but yeah, i think yeah. at the end of the day uh after a long-winded answer all i can say is just find things that you really want to do and get really good at those things because if you just do a bunch of different things in the end of the day it might not help or might not come back mm. to help you but at the end of the day it's like as much time as you can play you should but yeah. then also if you want to see results you have to be a bit more strict about it yeah and that's something that's really hard today where it's like dude like your phone is blowing up every two seconds and people are more right, busy right. than ever i feel like this like this this time of you know this century i feel like people are just everyone's so busy man there's like yeah never really a free moment oh i shocked myself <laughs> oh dear was it is it Lots to unpack there, and some fantastic um, responses as well. Um, so the earlier stage of your guitar development, it sounds like you were applying somewhat like a, a gamification approach to learning guitar. So it's like actually looking at how much you improve. Like you said, you would just learn something and then move on to something else. And you could actually see, I guess, if you reflected on it, that you were improving as you went along. So there's a lot of research to say that that really does help when learning a particular skill. And the other thing as well was, it sounds like back then as well, you were treating everything like um, like a beginner as well. So it's like, I want to learn this, I want to learn that. And you weren't, you know, limiting yourself to focus like you are now focusing on one one particular thing. And it's something that I read recently, um, if, if you're familiar with the YouTuber um, Ali Abdal, he did like a, a book recently, it's Feel Good Pro. Pro productivity, I should say. And that was one thing in there, like the whole gamification and treating something as, as something new and exciting all the time when it comes to learning whatever skill it is that you're trying to develop. And what you said back to me there really reminded me of that, is that you were treating it like a game. And I've wondered myself recently if I could start doing that with actually starting to keep like a, a track of a journal of some sort when I practice guitar or try to learn something new. And maybe that would help keep you motivated to, you know, keep practicing guitar and getting better. So that's something I'm going to experiment with and try and share with, um, you know, my audience on the channel after I've gone through this <laughs> process yeah. process myself. It's it's, yeah. it's so hard, man. And it's like yeah. you have to really invest a lot of time in like monitoring your progress too, because some yeah. people get things really quickly, and then I think those people, it's like they become really you know, virtuosos, but it's like yeah. when you get stuck, it's not always like, dude, I suck. Like I can't, yes. I can't yeah, do this or that. Come back yeah. It's like, okay. Yeah. Life. Maybe not everyone is born like Van Halen. You're maybe not everybody can reach that peak, Yeah, but there's well, like, dude, it's like, I, I, the more that I learn also, it's like, this is hard, but it's also not that hard. Like yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's very finitely not that hard. And it's like, if you just invest the time, so it's also, you know, when I teach, it's so much easier to give out the advice. And then I sit down and do it for myself. Self, yes, and then I'm yes, like, wow, yes. I am not following my own advice. My own advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, that is so true. And um, 
like you were saying, um, if you really want to be that great, I guess you've got to treat it as an athlete, right? Like you just, if, if, if but you, you got to have fun. To, yeah. But you, you have to have fun. The thing it, about it, that book is it is like the pursuit of your ultimate goal, but trying to do it in a fun way. It's like feel good uh, productivity as, as the title says. So I've taken a lot from that because I was treating myself a lot like a, you know, like a robot, you know, have to do this at this time, do that, you know, like, and then finding ways to enjoy doing certain tasks. Um, yeah, but that's, that's some, some wonderful insight there into uh, how you practice guitar. And I get asked that question a lot. And the thing is like, it's not the same. And I, I think I go through seasons of practicing a lot, then not practicing. It depends on, you know, life gets in the way, right? Especially when I run this channel, I'm, um, you know, it's a business at the end of the day. So I've got to take care of everything <laughs> as well as try and improve on, on, on the guitar at the yeah. same time. So I'm probably not the best person to, to ask about that question, but I do want to develop some kind of system soon where it is like um, kind of more of a, a, a fun but regimented style practice routine and see if that helps people uh, get better on the guitar. But uh, enough about me. Um, <laughs> I that's think, a whole other video guitar yes, practice yeah, like that's yeah. a whole hour video sure. for another time so i've got i've got some questions that i wanted to get to before we wrapped up here we could use these to to wrap up i guess so the other thing was about that guitar and in in, in the the ibanez collaboration that you're having and um you know the fishman as well with pickups like what's what's going on with, with that at the moment what's going on like yeah. uh <laughs> Like with with the endorsements or yeah, like how did that come that or just how the, whole, that, the whole story? How did that guitar come into fruition? The oh the, the one other one, the, 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 the one that you because they're both custom. Yeah, these are they? both like, yeah. these are both custom. So yes, this is yes, the other one, yes. and then uh, yeah. So I mean, I could tell the whole story. I don't know if that's helpful. <laughs> well, um, whatever you think is interesting. Okay, yeah, I, I'll just um. Well, so with the Fishman thing. Uh, that was very interesting because I was very anti active pickups ever since I had EMGs. I'm sure yeah, everybody has yeah. dabbled with the EMGs and uh, it wasn't so much that EMGs are bad. I think it was just that a lot of bands used them and bands that people liked use them. And I think they're good if you know what you're doing with them. But I think for me, it turned out that like I didn't really I associated EMGs with active pickups. Active pickups are bad because I didn't like like how it sounded. So I was very, very, very against it for like a very long time. And I was like, but I didn't really have like another pickup that I liked. I just always used like very like stock pickups or what right. I was like, dude, whatever, yes. like all neck pickups, like whatever. Um, it's been a, it's been a journey of finding out, you know, what gear is is what, you know, because sometimes yeah. I laugh at like people are like, yeah, like I only play mahogany this or that. And I'm just like, right, dude, right. Like, I'm a very, I'm very like not into that, I, that whole thing. So, um, with Fishman, I actually had another guitar endorsement through Aristides. Yes. And yes. I love those guitars. Um, they came up with a headless model and I was like all about it. Like I was like, this is really cool. I tried one. It was like perfect weight, perfect. Like yeah. those guitars are still super, like, regardless of who I'm endorsing, I can just clearly say that they're amazing. Yeah. Um, but the thing about those guitars is for the headless ones, um, because of the multi-scale, only certain pickups were yeah. uh, allowed or able to be used with those builds. Right. So right. when I got in touch with them, like, hey, I really want this guitar, like, um, they they were even allowing me to finance it, like, over a couple of months and stuff. So I was like, this is perfect. Uh, they were like, yeah, but, you know, you have to pick from these set of pickups. And I'm like, oh, do you have anything passive? And they were like, we have this one set of pickups, but it's mostly for metal. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, so with the active, like, what are my choices? And they're like, you can try these, like, Fishmans. Yeah. And I was like, uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> like, I was very anti-Fishman or just active because I was just Act like, yeah, dude, like, yeah, I yeah. see all these guys, like, shredding. And I just don't know, like, if I plug it in, it's just going to instantly sound like a metal tone. Like, right, that's just not right. for me. But when I looked at it, the financials of trying to get like a passive in there, it just made no sense. But I wanted the guitar. So I said, like, hey, OK, I see you have these Tosin Abasi signatures like I like Tosin. OK, you know, I like yeah. I like his clean sounds. I watched a couple videos and so I was like, OK, you know what? Like worst case scenario, I will fix this somehow like later. 
So I ordered them with the Tosins from the Fishmans in them, and I plugged them in. I had, like, everything set up how I normally have it set up, and I just plugged it in. And I was like, dude, this is just my tone, but better. Like, this is just yeah, okay. this is just dope. And so, like, yeah, of course, when you sit down and think about it, like, active pickups have compression. And when you're doing, like, a lot of percussive techniques, yes, yes, tapping, yes, all this yes. stuff, you need compression. And so mm -hmm. I was just like... And then the thing I didn't really know about those pickups is that they have different... Um, Voicings. sort of like voicings, voicings yeah yeah so yeah. once i hooked up like the single coil voicing i was like dude this is like this is it Crazy. like this is, we're going yeah. big time with this <laughs> so i was like dude i know i'm not like the biggest artist but i wonder if like you know if i built another guitar or something like they would help me yeah so yeah. i just reached out to them they had like an artist submission form and i was just like hey like you know i'm marcos like yeah here's my deal like you know it's kind of a weirder thing that i do with regard to what you're known for but I really like these pickups and I didn't hear anything for like a month. And I, 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 I don't know if you ever had that before where you reach out to someone and then in the music industry and then you just feel really dumb afterwards. You're just like, why did I yeah. do that? Like, yeah, it's like, it, yeah, it's like you, you send a text to a, like you, you meet like someone and then they're like, I guess if you're in high school or something and you meet a girl and she's like, oh, you, here's my number. And then you text her later and she doesn't reply. You just feel stupid. Like, <laughs> I just felt really dumb. So uh, it was fine. I was like, whatever. And then like randomly, just like weeks and weeks later, like had passed. Yeah. And I got a message from their A&R guy, Ken Susie. Yeah. And he was just like, hey, do you want to be like endorsed? And he sent me the contract <laughs> and he's like, yeah, all, yeah, here you go. And I was nice. like, word, yeah. like this is super sick. I was like, and then the deal was really like favorable. It was literally just like artist pricing. And I was like, this is great, man. Um, and uh, <laughs> the funniest part about all this is that I signed it. I sent it to him. Um, we got that all finalized. And then, like, literally the first email they sent me back after being like, you know, hey, we got it. By the way, would you like to come teach for Fishman? Like, oh, we're going right, to do, like, a right. teaching series. Yeah. And I was like, dude, I just met you guys. Like, what? Like, this is so this is <laughs> so cool. And it, yeah. they were so it was so generous of them, too. They were, like, paying for me to come out and do this whole thing. And it was it was such a great experience. But ever since then i've just been like very like it was just such a positive warm embrace from something that i didn't really have any stock in which was pickups like i didn't really care about it so yeah, i'm all in happens, on it right yeah, yeah. just like yeah that. i'm all in on it and it's like they're super connected with all these companies too so it's like yeah. the, the yeah. brand integration like with ibanez has been super seamless like right, right, they right, work right. with them all the time so they're like always in communication and it's like a total breeze um and yeah, they have different tons of models too so yeah it's just um on the theme of that like because I, I reached out to ibanez to get the you know the event uh, yy20 and they were just so like accommodating and nice i've never spoke to a company i mean i don't reach out to companies very often but i was like that one makes sense if i review it on this channel yeah and um i spoke with the, the japanese rep and yeah the wonderful <laughs> like wonderful yeah well that's i mean that's that's a crazy story too because it's like with ibanez you know i'd always seen them as like okay that's like they're the the probably the biggest guitar brand that that actually accommodates and like welcomes like alternative guitar players oh, okay, where it's sure. like yeah, yeah yeah fender and all the other big ones it's like they're i feel like they're more interested in like more mainstream acts which makes sense because yes, they're a mainstream yes. brand yeah but ibanez really gives time of day to guitar players that are you know trying to push the envelope and they're big you know but um yeah like when they reached out to me uh it was such a surprise because i really didn't think that they would you know ever do something like that i felt like i didn't fit into that wheelhouse so okay. we actually got you know we, we met and they were like oh we actually really like what you're doing and we want to see like where it goes you know so we want to help you do that so i was like yeah i'm i'm all in i think the thing that was hard for me was with aristides i got full customization but they're a custom shop you yes, know of course. they don't they don't do they don't even have any models they they, they okay. have yeah you know yeah. They have guitars that you pick from, but no, it's not like, hey, this is our base model. And then right, we do right. every guitar is custom. Every guitar is one of a kind. Yeah. So the to go from is, that uh, to the prices reflect that. <laughs> it, yeah. I mean, yeah. It's, you know, it's, so with Ibanez, it's like, hey, we're, you know, they're very generous in that. Like they were giving, I've never gotten like free stuff. So I got free stuff for the first yeah. time. And I was like, right. okay, this yeah. is really cool. Yeah. But the big thing was like, hey, 
I I don't know how I feel about like if I get a guitar like if yeah. it's just the guitar at Guitar Center like because I mean mm-hmm. that's the thing with me is like I'm not uh it's hard to I f- it's not always uh something that I find easy for myself to put myself in a box like oh I'm this right. if you look up like this kind of guitarist I'm that it's I feel like I always am hard to define. So it was like same thing with guitars. It's like, I don't want to be just like playing, you know, whatever model. So when I ended up talking with them, the big caveat for me was like, Hey, like what are my customization options? And they're like, basically like you can have, like you can get this guitar in the a store. AZ, AZ model, right? Yeah. This is the AZ, I think the 2402, but um, they said like any of the parts on here, you can swap out. Okay. And they do it very often. I did it, had no idea, but now that I'm aware of who else is endorsed by Ibanez, I see that all the time. Oh, yeah, like, you can see it now. Um, yeah. Other artists on there are getting stuff swapped out. So when I found this guitar, I was like, dude, this is sick, but like, why isn't there gold hardware on it? Like, that would just make <laughs> it like, cool. why aren't there white pickups? Yeah. It would be just so cool. So I had this stuff swapped out like very easily, and it was like, you know, it was just super seamless. Um, so that's been like a dream for me. I think the biggest one. The craziest one was this one because oh, yeah, they, they they got no their bridge pick up yeah right yeah. yeah so I I had this one done and I was super happy with it but I was like you know what like I had a similar model like this with Aristides but yes, yes. um I was obviously playing Ibanez now so it was kind yeah. of like well I really liked this guitar so I sent them like this model but with just this I kind of photoshopped something and I was like hey like <laughs> I know this is insane like yeah. this is like crazy. I but what cool. if you did this? Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. I that's expected the, them. Uh, it's still got the trem on there as well, right? Like, um, yes, it, yes, yeah, it does. Yeah. 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 yeah, 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 yeah. So the, it has a the trim. AZ, AZS model mint yeah. green color, but without. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but it's yeah. not floating. It's not floating. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I, cool. uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I love it, and um, I just thought they were gonna shoot me down when I sent them like the ask. I was like, yeah, like <laughs> it's might as well try, right? um yeah. but they didn't and they were like hey actually we can they were kind of like yeah like we're gonna basically like fill in that spot where the pick the other pickup was but just don't be like surprised yeah. if it doesn't look good or something blah 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 and like it looks perfect so i don't know what That's, they're talking uh, about but yeah. so those yeah. the um indonesian made ones or is it the um, japanese this is japanese so the az prestiges yes are yes. japanese yeah and then yeah, the yeah. indonesian ones i believe are like the cheaper models it's, it's um, premium they'll say yeah prestige yeah, yeah so like i actually have this guitar um that's crazy that's really nice yeah yeah i have this one uh so i don't this is probably gonna go live like another time like next week right yeah yeah i'm yeah, ne- it'd be, yeah next yeah next, so next. so on monday we're announcing a contest we're gonna give away this guitar so uh, this the, is uh the AZES essentials one right? yeah this is the essential yeah. the in yeah. pink and it has fishman pickups in it but this one is the fishman indonesian. pickups are not nice yeah. yeah this is indonesian but i filmed a playthrough with it yeah um yeah. honestly if i if i had like no money but i had enough to get this i would get it get it's it, like yeah, actually yeah. It's, I've, it, I've, I've played it i've played a couple of the, the great guitars for the like yeah for the, for, for the budget dude yeah, yeah yeah super cheap and like i think that's the thing that like surprised me the most about i is like the yeah. range of yeah. craftsmanship yeah. is so like some companies like you're saying like yeah with aristides it's like yeah they do the upper end really well but mm-hmm. if you have less than two thousand dollars good luck you yeah. know yeah and that's not a dig at them it's literally just like that's, a, that's, yeah, that's what they offer model, right? like, yeah that's what they offer and that's mm-hmm. amazing but then yeah. other companies it's like you know because I had had offers before from other companies. Maybe you also had some things like this where it was like a guitar company and it's like they don't offer anything above a grand. And then you would try it out and you're like, yeah, it feels like it. It doesn't feel very good. Right. You know? <laughs> like, so the range with the Ibanez stuff is crazy. Like when they yeah. even sent me their Q model, which is their headless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like yeah. blown away by the craftsmanship. I was like, this is already I've for the price. I've seen you've used so that good. one live as well on the audio tree session. You were using that one. The, yeah, the I, yeah, because yeah. they had just sent it to me, so I yeah, was like, yeah. all, I was like, sure, why not? But it was like, yeah, so yeah, I know I'm, I'm kind of go off on these random tangents, but oh, it's no, just kind of like it's, it's uh, interesting stuff. part of the story, yeah. I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm surprised to hear that it's the, um, they gave you the, the prestige stuff there as well, like because a lot of the. I'm not sure if they started with the the other artists that when they think of like Polyphia or something, you know, those are um, Indonesian made, you know, premium models. But I wonder if they 
have prestige versions of those guitars like yourself. And I then, think they do. Like I yeah. think I think the ones that the artists play are a bit nicer built, like they're hand built, but I think yeah. it just goes into how the um how the profit splits go because when they do a signature guitar, yeah. uh it has to, there's a lot of royalties involved, so they might downgrade on some parts that you right. know, it's still going to be right. a good guitar, but maybe it's not going to be the one that the artist prefers to play. Like Right, I would prefer right. to play this as it's built. Yeah. So because I, I would... can make that model in Indonesia, so the AZ and then exactly. premium line. So and it it would be exactly the same, but it just made in Indonesia because you'd have the same Correct. pickups in there and stuff. So Correct. Yeah. yeah. So I think yeah. they 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 have to buy the pickups at cost. They have to pay the royalty. Yeah. So I think they're just cutting down on some costs to make right. sure that everyone's right. happy. Because also, who wants to buy a Polyphia signature for? two plus grand that's like yeah you know realistically it's like gonna be a kid for christmas so it's like yeah. you don't you don't want to charge two grand like i remember when tosin was doing ibanez his guitars were like three thousand plus and it's like yeah, that's yeah. cool for the guy who's like really invested but if you're like young and you want to well, get that guitar it's maybe, there's a lot of tosin's audience would have that money though the, you know i think sure. his demographic is is a lot wider um in, in that regard yeah um, i think it comes down to the artist i think the artist is the one at the end who does yeah, make the decision, decide, but yeah, yeah. Um, I guess affordability is not bad, probably, yeah. right? Okay. So, Yeah, for sure. Um, we need to talk about your new album. That's what we need to yeah, do. Yeah, dude. Um, <laughs> <laughs> before yeah, this, right. Uh, before we wrap up. So um, tell us about that. What's the, what is it? What's the theme? What's the name? What were your approaches to called write? called Fruit or... Galaxy. Yes. You know, all the albums yes. have had fruit in it. So this one just felt like on another level. Um First album with Moises on drums. Yes, we did all yes. the drums first, and then I had demos of guitars and stuff. So um, I did that half with like Ibanez and half with Aristides. So I was still making like the switch, same pickups. Right. Okay. I did everything at home, like Axe Effects. So nice. we actually okay. saved a bunch of money on this record because I did a lot of things at home. Like right. right, um, right, right, right. Also, a lot of the you know sounds were done. Like a lot of the production stuff you hear was all done by me. So it was the first nice. album yeah. where I really took. I took more of the initiative with that. Um, but yeah, I just, I feel like we really tried to amp up the the technicality and There's make songs more, that were ultimately like very catchy, you know? Yeah, le electronic stuff on there, I would say. Like the first track that you've put out, uh, Cosmos, was really good. I like the music video, Thanks, the space theme to it as well. Obviously, it goes with the song name. Thank and you, you've dude. got one yeah. dropping. It'll be out by the time this video comes out, but that one's... Yeah. Uh, from the preview I saw, it's going to be like in the um, like a retro arcade kind of style, right? Like some yeah, shots. big yeah. yeah. So I think that was the big homage is like we've both really gotten into video games, like specifically like Smash Bros, which is like Chon yeah. was really into that. But like we really just like the whole idea of you know adding more of a digital element to rock music. So I think it's been done many times in different ways, but I think for us it's like we're really into like you know. Honestly, even just like one of our collective like favorite artists recently is uh, it's like a AI artist kind or not AI, but it's like a did like uh, I guess you could call it. Um, they have these sort of things in like different ways, uh, but I think it's like a virtual artist. So it's like not a real okay. person. It's just yeah. like something like that. But yeah. uh, Yami online is mm -hmm. like is one producer. And so it's like a fictitious pop person. But all the songs are just really interesting, like with fake vocals you oh, know, really? made from like a vocal wow. program and stuff. Yeah. And we were just really invested in like those sounds. So you can hear that throughout the record, like a lot of bit crushing, a lot of like like audio degradation in terms of like the, the sounds. So we wanted it to feel very like, you know, just like a very online record, like very yeah. like internet inspired, yeah, yeah. very I, video I, game inspired. I think you achieved that quite well because there is a lot of that. It does remind me of that, and um, like I said, like even like retro kind of game sounds, but in a modern way. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's yeah. 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 I just feel like that's kind of like the future of stuff, and that's kind of where it's going. And um, I feel very inspired by a lot of that stuff, like break break core uh, music, like just stuff that you know it has a lot of different samples. And um, I'm still a fan of all that math rock guitar stuff, so I'm kind of just putting them on top of each other yeah. and Moises is putting the backbeat on all the songs yeah. and it's yep we're fantastic just fantastic drumming 
yeah, we're just trying to make yeah. really crazy stuff where it's just like, I think I was also with, you know, other releases a bit like tired of it. Just, you know, I had time where I was like, oh, I just want to make a song and I don't care about this or that. But I think for this record, the, the goal was like, it's more let's like, just like turn it when people turn it on. It's like, OK, whoa, like this is yeah. crazy. So would you say it's more of like a thematic approach for this one? versus yeah. some other yeah okay I'm, yeah. I, 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 love, I mean it's, I love that kind of thing on albums we're so. more of a band now you know yeah. like we're yeah. more of, we're more of a band I think before it was really more me and yeah. so now you have more of that input from like another drummer because it's mm -hmm. like I wrote I wrote all the treatments and everything for the drums but at the end of the day like I wasn't playing them so you had, right. you had someone else yeah. who was really creatively invested in like making those parts as good as they could be so okay. if it had just if it just ended with me like it probably wouldn't have been as good, um, so it's ha it's helpful to have someone else on your team like taking it to the extra level. You know right, what I mean? Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. And wh when does that come out? It comes out on March twenty second. March twenty so second. Okay. Probably after this video comes out. But so I guess if you're watching few... it, you can definitely hear the first two singles. They're already yeah. out now. Yeah. 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 And there'll be a few more coming, I guess. Uh, I think we're only doing two this time. Two this yeah, time. we're doing okay, it all independent. Okay. So before we had like more, I guess, music video money. So we we tried to make two really good music videos. They look uh, really so you'll good. See the other one very soon. Yeah, the bands these days, you know, they don't put a lot of well, they don't make videos or they don't put a lot of effort into it. So it's, it's always wonderful to see that you are putting so much effort into those videos and really got that online presence, like, um, you know, doing the playthroughs, being on Instagram, just um, putting a lot of yourself out there. And it's a lot of work. So I appreciate all of Thanks, that dude. effort. Um, Thanks, I know dude. how hard that can be. So yeah. um, wonderful chatting to you as always. Some really yeah, good totally, advice man. there. Yeah, and I look forward to our next conversation. Probably yeah, hundred percent. From now, <laughs> it's been good. It's been good to chat. Yeah, I feel yeah. like there's just so much, so much to talk about. So maybe more videos about other things another I've, time. Yeah, I, I, I can think of a bunch of topics that have come up today that I didn't know <laughs> that you had an interest in that we can we can chat about again soon. Oh, so, totally, hundred percent. All right, as always, thank you very much, Marcus. I'll see you again cool. soon. Cool. Peace. Thanks, man. See ya.